Huntington Ingalls Industries, or HII, recently announced that its Newport News Shipbuilding Division, or NNS, began topside testing the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, on the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, CVN-79. First integrated into the USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, EMALS replaces the steam catapults currently used on the U.S. Navy's Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. Following successful no-load testing on catapults 1 and 2, known as the Bowcats, the NNS team, alongside the John F. Kennedy crew, has started dead-load testing. In this phase, large wheeled car-like structures of graduated weights up to 80,000 pounds to stimulate the weight of actual aircraft are launched off the carrier's bow into the James River. They are then retrieved and relaunched until the conclusion of the test program to ensure the catapults are ready for their primary intended purpose, to launch all carrier-based fixed-wing aircraft flown by the U.S. Navy. The first dead loads used in this testing have special significance. Family members of shipbuilders signed them with messages of congratulations and gratitude during the shipyard's family day held in October. As we make sustained progress in the construction, testing, and turnover of John F. Kennedy, relaunching the dead load testing phase is a visual demonstration of how far we've come, said Lucas Hicks, vice president of the John F. Kennedy CBN-79 new construction aircraft carrier program. It is evident from the thousands of written messages that our shipbuilders and their families appreciate and understand the significance of our work. We are proud of the incredible teamwork that has brought us to this point and remain committed to delivering this mighty aircraft carrier to the fleet so the crew can carry out the important mission ahead. The first dead load launch off the flight deck is a historic moment for PCU John F. Kennedy and is a testament to the power of great teamwork between our JFK crew, HII team, and Nav Air engineers, said Captain Colin Day, commanding officer, PCU John F. Kennedy, CBN 79. I'm particularly proud of our air department and the hardworking aviation bosun mates who work tirelessly alongside the engineering and testing teams to get us to this critical moment. Traveling more than 300 feet down the catapult track at more than 150 miles per hour, EMALS provides expanded operational capability at reduced costs, higher launch energy capacity, and more accurate end speed control, with smooth acceleration at both high and low speeds. The launch profiles have been optimized to reduce stress on the aircraft, in contrast to the sudden acceleration of steam catapults. Kennedy is the second Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier under construction at NNS, the nation's sole designer, builder, and refueler of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. In addition to Kennedy, two other Ford class carriers are under construction at NNS, Enterprise CVN-80 and Doris Miller CVN-81. CVN-79 John F. Kennedy was procured in FY 2013. The Navy's proposed FY 2024 budget estimates the ship's procurement cost at 12,700 million, i.e. 12.7 billion in then year dollars. The ship is being built with an improved shipyard fabrication and assembly process that incorporates lessons learned from the construction of CVN-78. CVN-79 is scheduled for delivery to the Navy in July 2025. At 1,092 feet in length and 100,000 tons, CVN-79 incorporates more than 23 new technologies, comprising dramatic advances in propulsion, power generation, ordnance handling, and aircraft launch systems. These innovations will support a 33% higher sortie generation rate at significant cost savings compared to Nimitz-class carriers. The Gerald R. Ford class also offers a considerable reduction, approximately $4 billion per ship, in life cycle operations and support costs compared to the earlier Nimitz class. The new technology and warfighting capabilities that John F. Kennedy brought to the fleet will transform naval warfare, 
supporting a more capable and lethal forward-deployed U.S. naval presence. In an emerging era of great power competition, CVN-79 will be the most agile and lethal combat platform globally, with improved systems that enhance interoperability among other platforms in the carrier strike group and with the naval forces of regional allies and partners. On December 7, 2007, the 66th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, Arizona Congressman Harry Mitchell proposed naming this ship Arizona. In 2009, Arizona Congressman John Shadegg proposed naming either CVN-79 or the subsequent CVN-80 after Barry M. Goldwater, after the late U.S. Senator, also from Arizona. On May 29, 2011, the Department of Defense announced that the ship would be named for John F. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, who served in the Navy during World War II. CVN-79 is also the second aircraft carrier to honor President John F. Kennedy for a lifetime of service to the nation. The first USS John F. Kennedy CV-67 aircraft carrier served the fleet for over 50 years before decommissioning in 2007. John F. Kennedy was initially planned to be completed in 2018. This was extended to 2020 after Secretary of Defense Robert Gates announced in 2009 that the program would shift to a five-year building program to place it on a more fiscally sustainable path. By late 2012, delays had occurred in construction and the Navy Department was investigating extending the construction time of both Enterprise and John F. Kennedy by an additional two years, which could delay the carrier's entry into service until 2022. On October 1, 2019, the ship's crew was activated for the first time as pre-commissioning unit, or PCU, John F. Kennedy at a ceremony aboard the vessel at Newport News Shipbuilding. On October 29, 2019, Newport News Shipbuilding began flooding the dry dock where John F. Kennedy had been under construction. In November 2020, HII received a nine-figure modification on an earlier contract to accomplish CVN-79, single-phase delivery and joint strike fighter F-35C capabilities in Newport News, Virginia. According to the contract announcement, the single-phase delivery approach is adopted to meet both fleet requirements and a congressional mandate of ensuring that CVN-79 is capable of operating and deploying joint strike fighter F-35C aircraft before completing the post-shakedown availability as codified in Section 124 of the Fiscal 2020 National Defense Authorization Act, Public Law 11692.